good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Soul Citizens. We are back after a two, what, almost three week, two and a half week hiatus. And it is good to be back uh, in the uh, saddle again with my good co-hosts and friends who I haven't seen, it seems like, in forever. Uh, so welcome. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Those of you who are in chat, appreciate you all being here. I'm going to try and get us back on the groove of being back every week. But before we get into the show today, we've got a really cool topic. I'm going to introduce everybody who's on the panel tonight. Let's start to my left with the lovely Jade Star Watcher. Jade, what's up? Hello. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy I am New Year. very excited about this year. You're excited? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm ever an optimist. I, I'm excited about Star Citizen. I'm excited about space games. Okay. Did you do anything special for the New Year's? Um, not for the New Year's specifically. I think I might have been playing Jump Town on New Year's. I don't. I, I don't remember. Oh, really? I oh. did. I did drink a lot of champagne though. <laughs> That's probably why I don't remember. That's why you don't remember. Okay, very cool. Brackazogs, thank you, thank you for gifting us for the first sub for 2022. We appreciate that. We really, really do. And so does our good friend Whammer. But I don't know where Whammer's at. Oh, look at that. James Brown is back. Oh my God, that scary. James Brown is back. <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you also for that. We appreciate it. Uh let's 15 go. 15 month great day. Yeah, I know. It's been around a, we've been around a long time. We're getting old. Uh <laughs> let's go over to Colossal. Welcome back, Colossal from the warm state of Florida. How are you, man? I'm doing fantastic. Happy New Year to you all. And I gotta start it off, Griff, with Test Squadron. Your test I Squadron. I know you gotta get gotta your Test Squadron, Test Squadron in. That's a Shout out to Test Squadron. <laughs> Shout out to Jay. Shout out to Griffin Fastcart. Happy New Year, guys. It's good to be back. And um, I'm ready to start to New Year rolling. All right. Along with, with this weight diet regimen that I'm awesome. trying to get on. Oh, boy. Okay. Awesome. That was your New Year's resolution? No, it's always my New Year's resolution. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need New Year's to start that. Okay. And last but not least, the man himself, Fast Cart FC. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well. Thank you. Welcome back. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, we've got a interesting show today. Uh, you know, as you guys know, CIG is on their break. Uh, after we get to the end of the year, right at the beginning of January, they just take a couple weeks off. They get their own holiday time in with families and get a little break away from development. But they also come back and do a little bit of huddling before they come back and speak to us. And so we're taking advantage of that time right now by talking. We are going to still talk about Star Citizen, but we're going to talk about it in light of other space games that we've been hearing about over the last year or two that are proposed to possibly launch in some way uh, this year in 2022. They may have already, one of them actually has already launched a little bit of something, um, but we're going to talk about um, these games and you know what's their impact as far as, as gaming for us as players, but then also in light of what we've been supporting in development of Star Citizen. So hopefully uh, some of these games may be games you've never heard of, and some of them may be games that you've seen a teaser for or a trailer for. Uh, but of course, we're looking for some lively discussion from our panel. And I'm sure you guys will give us live discussion in the chat as well. So uh, I did a survey before we got started with the panel and asked them how many of these games that they were familiar with. And really, there were only maybe two, maybe three out of the six that we have that folks were pretty familiar with. So they're kind of seeing this raw just like you all are and seeing it for the first time. So we're going to cover them and and, you know, See what you guys think of them. And I tried to pick games that were very different from each other as well. So hopefully you'll see that as we go through them. So let's go ahead and kick off with the very first one. It's called Boundary. Uh, no one on the panel had heard of Boundary beyond seeing the title today. Uh, and so I'm not sure if anybody in chat has heard of Boundary. If you have, uh, just say yes. Let us know that you've heard of Boundary. If not, uh, we're going to... Uh, put this in let's see is admiral with us tonight i don't know if admiral's with us tonight fc if admiral is he okay admiral if you can you know make sure you drop the uh the trailer uh for this in for folks so they can check it out later on um but let's take a quick look at boundary and then i'm going to get again we're going to get the initial feedback from our our panel let me read the background to this it says boundary is made up of a team of other players to get i'm sorry team up with other players to engage in zero gravity firefights against other teams in this upcoming first person shooter game. Studio Surgical Scalpels was established by four industry veterans in August of 2015 
and they are dedicated to produce the best shooting experience on console and for VR games. The studio is located in Shenzhen, which is a technology hub of China. So we want you guys to take a look at this. I thought it was different for an FPS game. FPS games are pretty common, but uh, I, I think that, uh, yeah, let's do the first one, uh, Admiral. The first trailer is always the first one we want to go with. Thank you for putting that in for me. And then we'll get some reactions from our panel. So here we go. Let's look at uh, Moundry. By the way, they're going to be two, a teaser and then a trailer. Okay, so um, FPS in space, orbital station uh, with suits that are comparable to what is worn today, maybe a little bit more in the future. Uh, I'm gonna start with Jade on this one. Jade, I don't even know if I've ever asked you about uh, FPS before, but what do you think about what, what you saw in this particular trailer? Well, uh, I mean, you know, before anybody goes, it's a game, Jade. Yes, I'm gonna start with, it's a game, but... <laughs> I mean, it makes very little logical sense. It looks like they have like a, a mock-up of the ISS or something like mm -hmm. the Deep Space Gateway and mm -hmm. they're firing missiles and bullets mm -hmm. and like, you know, that that would be a really bad day on the ISS. <laughs> I'll, that's all I got to say. Like, you wouldn't want to be doing that. But that said, mm -hmm. this is, you know, interesting because it's it's appeal to me would be that it's a vr game mm -hmm. or at least mm -hmm. they say they've got experience on console and vr mm -hmm. games i hope that this will be a vr game because this seems pretty mm -hmm. shallow otherwise it, it's star marine mm -hmm. it's literally a mode of star citizen but with less graphical detail mm -hmm. and, and set yes. more in the present day mm -hmm. okay okay colossal how about you go to you on this one what are your thoughts on for this for fps play i mean i would have to agree with jay mm -hmm. um but, I mean, it's an arena. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's 5v5, five five, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's limited. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Um, that's part of the reason probably why I didn't hear about it. But, um, I I mean, I, I, I don't have that much to say about it other than as far as science wise, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's just another type of arena game with a different genre. Mm -hmm. You're in space folks, shoot each other up. Mm -hmm. I I mean, who wants to do that in space? But, um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I, this is one particular game that I probably wouldn't be interested in. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the scope, I don't think the scope is is big, mm. uh, but we'll see how mm. this works out. Okay, okay. FC, what about you? I, I'm going to agree with the brief field. He he made two good comments in Twitch chat. He said he liked <laughs> the, 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 the destructible terrain, and he he said he said the, the game need, need Gundam. So I think Gundam will, will make this game g- g- pop. But other than that, um, the the realistic gun action is something I haven't see, really seen. Well, mm-hmm. in a space game, I haven't seen in space. Game. I don't play I don't play Call of Duty or, or, or any of those games. But didn't Call of Duty have like a space a space variant? Like mm, nah, they oh, had a it? space cinematic and some quick scenes. It wasn't anything oh, okay. of any depth. Uh, in space. I mean, I would think maybe maybe this is supposed to be like a continuation of that. I mm. mean, not 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 a direct continuation, but you know, mm-hmm. in that in that same theme. But I did like the grappling hook, so uh, hopefully we, we can get something like that. No, I know. Okay, okay. We got tractor beams. Yeah, yeah. You know, what, it's grappling hooks. What, yeah. what, what caught my attention with this was the mixture of genre. It was, you know, we've been so used to FPS being on a, you know, on the planet, in the cities, wherever they're normally doing it, uh, sometimes in a historical setting. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting that they would take it into space. And also the fact that, not to mention the fact that <laughs> when the IGN and several other groups have done videos on this and they've gone into greater detail about the depth of this. So even though what we're seeing is the FPS stuff, there is a tremendous amount of custom abil- customizing that you can do. Um, and there's some scenarios and a bunch of different maps and a whole bunch of other stuff, supposedly that they're setting up for this. I don't know what the theme is behind it. You know, what's the motivation behind it other than the fact that it is an FPS, but the fact that they are using what seem to be both conventional and maybe a little bit slightly futuristic versions of, of things that are used now was what kind of intrigued me about it. I'm not a big FPS person, but I did kind of think it was interesting that they would take it into space uh, at a space station and the fact that there was these destructible aspects to the station. So um, again, the link is in there. You guys can check it out. Uh, This is also scheduled to be released, I think this year. Uh, And it is on Steam, if I'm not mistaken. You can actually check it out there as well. So, okay. We got boundary out of the way. That was going to probably be the one that I knew was going <laughs> to not last very long as far as discussion goes, but uh, we're going to move on to, actually, these are the more controversial ones at the beginning. So uh, let's move on to our next one, which is Earth 2. And uh, who's supposed to read that? Is that Colossal or Jay? Who's reading yeah, that? That's me. That's you? All right. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, Earth 2. So Earth 2 is a futuristic concept for a second Earth, a metaverse between virtual and physical reality in which real-world geolocations on a section of the map correspond to user-generated v- digital virtual environments. These environments can be owned, bought, sold, or in the new future, deeply customized. A virtual one-by-one scale version of Earth is inevitable, and Earth 2 is the beginning of this exciting future. Phase 1 is now live and represents the central global body that aims to determine ownership of digital assets and property inside the futuristic virtual metaverse of Earth. And you already can see the first humble beginnings of what will unfold um, into an economic situ- uh, simulation destined to provide Earth 2 with all the materials it needs to build our dream. Built on top of map box technology, uh, they have created a geographically linked digital grid layer that spans across the entire planet, allowing people to claim ownership of virtual land in the form of tiles. Uh, In its version, that virtual land will increase in value over time based on demand, location, and earning potential, much the same way that physical land does. So be sure to claim your your own land in key locations around the world early on. Okay, all right. And Raytheon, hold on to that thought because we're going to talk about this. I said these are the controversial games at the beginning. So uh-huh. let's take a quick look at uh, Earth 2 and then I'll give some more background and then we'll talk about it.
The Earth 2 team has been hard at work behind the scenes through 2021, bringing our project vision to life and working to properly position the platform for the future. Today, we're excited to announce a key step forward in those plans with the acquisition of the technology behind the competitive shooter drone. Several months in the making, this acquisition includes the fast-paced, action-packed 3D combat game, along with all of its additional underlying technology. It's important to note that the majority of the game footage throughout this video displays clear representations of environments and vehicles players can create, customize, and use in-game via our editor tools. The deal also sees the core part of the Five Studios Interactive Dev Team behind Drone officially join the Earth 2 development team, and in turn, bring their extensive game and world-building experience to the project. From advanced open-world terrain rendering, sophisticated vehicle and arena editors, and advanced user customization tools, to indoor-outdoor real-time lighting and dynamic weather effects, this team has demonstrated their ability to create robust, graphically impressive technology, and Drone is just one representation of their outstanding abilities. As part of the official development team, They'll be working on incorporating elements of this established tech into the Earth 2 platform itself to be part of an expanding team that will transform the application into a truly innovative and user-driven metaverse experience. The ultimate goal of this acquisition is progression through direct ownership of relevant, innovative world building and gameplay technologies, which assist in setting the foundation of Earth 2's metaverse and our movement into Web 3.0. It also illustrates our ongoing commitment to continue expanding our team of talented developers who possess proven abilities with skill sets relevant to delivering the Earth 2 platform to millions of people across the globe, said Shane Isaac, Earth 2 founder and CEO. He went on to say that Five Studios Interactive had already developed several key pieces of technology that Earth 2 believe will assist in core contributions to our platform. And this technology will be pivotal to delivering the final phases of our game in a way that stays true to the concept, while also providing a high-quality experience for the user. Even with Earth 2's near-term focus on Phase 2, this move provides long-term continuity by ensuring key Phase 2 features will be seamlessly carried into Phase 3. Creating a AAA-quality, open-world, real-time rendering experience is a multi-year effort, and Earth 2 is focused on laying the framework for that now. The pre-existing version of Drone, including its arena and vehicle editor, is currently available on Steam. We invite our players to download the free trial version if they wish to begin familiarizing themselves with the demo, but urge people not to purchase the game just yet, as Earth 2 intends to change the price of the game to free in the near future. Players can expect an updated, improved, and expanded version of the game when Earth 2 officially re-releases the game under the Earth 2 banner sometime through 2022. The re-release will include numerous updates on features such as gameplay, game design, and graphics, as well as bug fixes and general support of the product, and will have core elements that link into parts of Phase 1 and Phase 2, the economic simulator. The game itself will be free to play. We would also like to acknowledge the drone community and their dedication to the project thus far, and look forward to expanding Drone the game and welcoming new players as a result of our future plans and support. Moving forward. The team is hard at work bringing the Earth 2 vision to life, and you can expect more details as development progresses. Stay tuned to the Earth 2 YouTube, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, and official Earth 2 website for more updates and exciting news. Okay, so that's a little bit on Earth 2. Um, let me start off with Fast Cart this time. And, and you know, I want to put some background to some of these games that we're talking about because there's some things I want us to think about to talk about as, as we go along with this. Um, much of what we're seeing in the games that are coming out now, as I mentioned earlier, are based on teasers and trailers. Uh, we have not seen a lot of in-engine, uh, a lot of stuff that's, you know, actually showing gameplay. So I want to keep that in mind. Uh, secondly, some of these games are, have been considered kind of questionable as to whether or not they'll be able to achieve the goals that they want to aspire to. Uh, Boundary is not necessarily one of them, but Earth 2 is. Earth 2 is one of those games that people are kind of like wondering, hmm, uh, you know, will they be able to pull this off? Because they've used certain terms, such as <clears throat> this is the equivalent of Ready Player One, uh, that this is what they're trying to create. So let me go to you, Fast Card. I know we've had this conversation before, Fast Card, about buying land in relation to Star Citizen. And this game is basically that. It's, it's a duplicate of the Earth, but the land is all available. People can buy it and, 
and supposedly build on it and do things with it, but we don't know what that is. And they're using real money to do this. So give me your thoughts about what you saw on this. Well, there's that point which you um, discussed, and I don't know the pricing that that that, that they'll talk about that they've talked about if it's even been um, discussed yet. Um, but yeah, it's like there's a huge uproar when it came to buying land and stuff. Sort of thing when it first started, uh, it was eighty dollars and forty dollars respectively for four by four and eight by eight. Um, I think I heard a little bit of an uproar it, 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 to announce it, but it wasn't as big as it was for Star Citizen, maybe because it, 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 um, it's so new, so people haven't, didn't know about it yet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe maybe Star Citizen pioneered buying land and, um, and, and well, not pioneered it, but, you know, made it more popular. Mm -hmm. But um, and for, for, for what we've seen tonight, I heard of it too, but I haven't seen the second trailer with, with the drone thing and everything like that. That is new to me. Mm -hmm. But I will agree with um with Cyberwolf. They showed that one character, and it definitely had a Mass Effect vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, the drone video that you're looking at right now is actually, Drone is another company they acquired, and now they're saying they're going to use that engine and drone to help build out, to use to build out the world for Earth 2. Because people kept asking the question, like, well, what engine are you using? What are you doing? And there was never an answer for it. And they've implied that this drone, that they, this engine that they use for drones, what they're going to use now as part of their build out for it. Uh, let me go to Colossal next on this one. Earth 2 Colossal, any thoughts? You're muted, buddy. Yeah, um, it's just a stock market using video games. I mean, it's it's it's. A, I mean, it's using the idea of metaverse to go ahead and 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 sell electric electronic currency, um, sell or trade or virtual land. And, we're using yeah, cr cryptocurrency. Okay, right. They're using cryptocurrency. So mm -hmm. just like I said earlier, I mean, this is. I mean, I I think of the other game uh, um, that you have up here as well that we'll talk about uh, in later on the show. But they're both identical to me in, in, in this way of, of uh, I would say, a beginner's realm of, of in, uh, they're, they're tapping into a gaming market now. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like they're inviting new people to understand how cryptocurrency work. But this time we're going to use it in a video game mm -hmm. and we're going to call it a video game. Mm -hmm. And you can buy all this imaginary land and all this good stuff and blah, blah, blah. And you get to trade and sell. I mean, I'm looking at the website right now. I mean, there are mm -hmm. tier ones and tier twos and uh, land going as much as what, 8,000% increase or decrease or whatever you want to call it. I don't mm -hmm. know how to read this thing, <laughs> but this is like a start, a stock market-ish type thing using a, a video game mm -hmm. as a basis to sell cryptocurrency. So, I mean, that, that's how I see it. Let me know if I'm wrong, anybody. I know, you're Jane, wrong. I know you're familiar with that. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm wrong. Okay, so, so educate me on that one. But this is interesting in terms of how they're doing this. So go ahead, Jay. I mean, I'm sorry, Griff. I, I know you probably got somebody no, no, else. No, 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 no. Jay says you're wrong. I'm, Jay, Jay, I kind of think you're half wrong, but I'll, I'll let Jay. According to the developer, you're wrong. I'll, I'll, just, okay. I'll preface it by that. So the developer um, said that this has nothing to do with cryptocurrency but they also use the buzzword um in that one video where they mentioned web 3.0 mm -hmm. and web 3.0 has several defining features and that's decentralization you know blockchain trustless and permissionless artificial intelligence and machine learning connectivity and ubiquity okay so if they're not using a cryptocurrency, I'm not exactly sure where they get the decentralization from. So I, right. I think what, you know, we, we have to also make a differentiation between NFT, which is a technology, and a cryptocurrency, which mm -hmm. is a currency. You can have NFTs without, you know, right. them having a cryptocurrency associated with them. Mm -hmm. um, just think of them as trading cards, right? You don't need a trading card that, uh, you don't need a cryptocurrency to have a baseball card, mm -hmm. right? It's, but you do use blockchain and because crypto was the first thing to use blockchain, people associate NFTs with blockchain, with crypto, and they get it all, you know, sort of, it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. I look at this more <clears throat> like Second Life, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody made any big deal about the fact that people were spending real money to buy digital land in Second Life um, when it came out 20 two years ago, I think it was, mm -hmm. or something like that. And it's still going and it and it's still around. Mm -hmm. And my big question with this is, 
they've showed that um, drone game and they're supposed to somehow integrate these two things together. That, to me, it's not, it seems a little bit weird that mm -hmm. here's this random game on Steam that has little to do with this, but they're trying to make you think it does and then they're going to rebrand it mm -hmm. to me i wouldn't i wouldn't invest in this project um i would wait and see the game when it's free to play and maybe jump in then mm -hmm. yeah i mean it, and thank you great uh, jay for the clarification on that one because it, 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 just like i was telling griff earlier the thing that it if when this kicks in or if this kicks in uh the only thing that i'm going to question is longevity I mean, because mm. we've, seen, we've seen games that come up and get come and go. They're popular. Look, let's look at New World. New World did really, really well, and then all of a sudden, you know, just because of the gameplay mechanics. But mm -hmm. I mean, will this game do the same thing? Will yeah. it at one point generate so much money through trade and whatever, and then all of a sudden people are getting tired of it and and it falls off the market and it goes away because it's it's based off of this type of concept? I don't mm -hmm. know. You know, and to bring them back to the start, so thing that, that a lot of people, are, are people who who aren't like us, who are like um, who, who are really into Star Citizen, that, that, that's the that's the way they have it with Star Citizen as well. So it's it, it's not just Earth Two that people have, have have that worry about. Yeah, there's you know there's some things here. Jay hit on something that I think is does does raise a huge question for a lot of people with this, because there were questions in the beginning of you know when when people are asking for money. They're also looking for, show us something tangible that allows us to support what you're trying to do. And when there's no definition of an engine or, you know, all we have is a few names of people who work in the industry, they're going to do this. You know, there is this, there's this two things going on, right? Because people are using real money and this is unlike Star Citizen where, and this is why we distinguish backing and investing, right? Where here, this land is aided, they trade. There, there's actual trading. There's a market, there's a ticket, there's a ticker. And people are trading real money to swap and buy land. The tier, the T1 and T2 you saw colossal in there is their tier one, tier two. The tier one people are the people who bought in real early in the game and snatched up a lot of stuff. And then they opened up tier two later, okay? Uh, but there is real money that's being exchanged with this. Um, one of the things that, that is a pressure point is, and you, you read it in the description, that last line, so be sure to claim your own land in key locations around the world early on. Now that says two things, right? It says one thing that, oh yeah, get the, get the prime land early, but it also says get the money into us because we need it to develop, <laughs> right? There, right? There's, right. Two, there's yeah. two things going on here, That's right? And there's that part of people who don't want to be left behind because Jay's advice is kind of the wise advice of like, let's wait and see. But if I wait and see, I might miss out on the prime land. Right. You see what I'm saying? I, I might miss out some type of way. So I'm going to wrestle with that. You might miss that. out on the scam. That, that's true. That's true too. <laughs> that's true too. But but, yeah. but 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 the but but the tenor that's going around in gaming right now, especially around as you mentioned, Jade, around the terms of crypto and things of that nature, where people are hearing about people making money. You know, and and you know, if I got into crypto ten years ago, or if I even got in crazy Doge a year ago, you know, I you know I made have made, made some money. So now there are people who want to be able to get on these buses. And the question becomes, you know, are these developers genuine? I'm not saying they're not. Are they genuine in what they're trying to achieve? Or are they putting out something with a lot of speculation that maybe they'll be able to do and maybe they won't be able to deliver? And, uh, you know, where this money is going out and being paid out, this isn't like, a, oh, if it doesn't work out, you're going to get your money back. You know, this money goes out. Uh -huh. and, and particularly when we get into games that are in the area th that are being spent on crypto, that money's gone. It's deregulated. It's it's out there. You know, you got to be wise about and do your homework in what you're going to invest in. Earth 2 has got a lot of criticism. I can tell you that right off the bat. And and there's people who are saying scam already. I think the thing is that we've got to see because there are new, these are some new areas of gaming that are coming out. And I've already expressed on the show before my concern about the balance between gaming and investing. And how do you keep both of them so that they both remain reasonable let's just say it that way right because I, right now there's some things going on with one game i'm really weird about i wonder whether or not they have to deliver because the investing side is there already the game's not there and people are dropping money left and right All without right. the game even being that they're making money don't get me wrong i'm just saying you know these visuals and like right now i was watching a video on um unreal engine today and just looking at how easy one of the, the person who was doing this video said 
it's so easy for people to make these beautiful videos now because the assets are amazing. You don't almost have to have any programming background. They can create beautiful assets and people get caught up on these visuals and say, wow, this looks so gorgeous. And man, look at the visuals. But the reality of it is, can they deliver a game? And to your point, Colossal, a game that's going to be around a year, two years, three years later, or is it just going to be something that comes out the people who get it in the beginning, you know, get to take advantage of it. But after that, it's, it's a dying horse afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, cause I'm even looking at the game activity right now and I see this one name that keeps popping up as anonymous, mm -hmm. just purchase one tile, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like they got a bot, you know, yeah. trying to, you know, purchase land. That's what, it, that's what I see people doing here. So mm -hmm. ugh, I, I don't know if this is going to be something that I'm worth, to, uh, that I'm interested in, in doing a risky investment on this one. I, okay. Uh, uh, speaking of, speaking of fear, fear of missing out, a, a while, like maybe 15 years ago, there was a, a project it allows people to buy land on the moon mm -hmm. and there was a and, and there, i don't know a third a third amount of money for land on the moon and i i wonder how how people feel about that investment well i mean if they'd have done their homework they'd have known that that was totally forbidden by the outer space <laughs> treaty of 1967 <laughs> therefore they were being scammed but mm -hmm. you know again do, do your, your re research do your, do your homework, homework. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah do your due diligence absolutely it was a caveat to tour. The buyer beware. I always remember that, yeah. folks. Let the buyer beware. Okay. All right. That was some good coverage on that. Let's go to, to something that's a little more uh, less cringy when it comes to <laughs> you know, games. Let's talk a little bit about um, a game that we're all familiar with, a franchise that we're familiar with. And, I, and Fast Card, I think you've got the read on this one. So why don't you share, everybody, what we're going to talk about? Mass Effect 5. Mass Effect will continue. The trailer showcases two different galaxies promoting the theory that the Mass Effect 5 may be the sequel to both Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect Andromeda, telling a story that spans two separate galaxies. Bioware producer Brendan Holmes has confirmed that Mass Effect 5 will also utilize Unreal Engine. Here's the new spine thing, stingling teaser trailer for an upcoming Mass Effect revealed during the Game Awards. Alrighty, here we go. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched. Roger, copy. Eagle, Houston, you're a go for landing, over. Capture a station. Unknown vessel approaching. We need first contact protocol. Commanding now stands as partners of the government. Hot for the way. That's me. Okay, Mass Effect 5. I'm going to jump to Colossal first on this one. Colossal, were you a Mass Effect player? Did you get into the Mass Effect games at all? I'm going to be quick. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell about that from his face. What you can tell from his face. But I'm they're surprised. Not done yet. I'm they're surprised. Not done yet. Okay. No, I mean, I've seen it for a long time. I've watched other people play it, Captain Richards, blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. But I've never gotten a chance to play Mass Well, I won't say it. No, I'm sorry. I've never purchased it i don't intend on purchasing it i like people watching it so okay you enjoy watching it. it okay yeah. all right cool all right fc i'm going to go to you because i know that you did play the series in fact if i'm remembering you bought the remastered set that came out as well so uh give us your thoughts about uh 
what you saw. Well, real quick, I just want to say Colossal. It'll be on the Mac, um, Game Game Pass soon. So if you, if you, uh, the Legendary Edition will be on Game Pass. So if you just want to pay, uh, pay something cheap and, and play for the month, you can do that. So yeah, let's do it cheap. I don't want to waste my space. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> but uh, I, 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 the, the, the trailer is uh, it, it, I, I, it, it really hyped it up. There's not much um, story about it. Like uh, we, we don't know much about it other than we seen a character pick, picking up the, um, the object there. Um, without, and, without any spoilers, uh, is there is there something in this trailer that is connecting that you recognize? Or no? Yeah, the character. Okay, the, the character. The character we, okay. see, we see at the end. Okay. Yeah. So that, 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 that spoiler. But a few days ago, I want to say a week ago, they tweeted, the, the um, Match Twitter account tweeted a picture. It had a new spaceship. It's supposed to re re replace the, the, the Normandy mm -hmm. and five characters, or four characters, like a squad, like a squad out, outside the, um, the, the ship. So they, they are trying to get the hype thing going. Hopefully it'll be out this year. Or... It, hopefully it'll be good and come out next year <laughs> okay. because we don't want to repeat what happened with, with Andromeda because I mean they, they have a huge cloud over their head because of Andromeda. Okay, okay. Jade, how about you? Were you a Mass Effect player? No, I've never played any of these. Um, you've, heard of, does... you've heard of this, you've heard oh, of the franchise though? Absolutely. Okay, okay. I mean, how could you not, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I've never played any of them. I do want to. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things of getting around to doing it. Mm -hmm. um, this does look good, but I do have one criticism, and it's not it's not just Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot of big big name games. You know, we started with one of the most obscure games on this list, Boundary, mm -hmm. that was showing actual gameplay, mm -hmm. and I, I much prefer to see that to promote a game than a cinematic because, mm -hmm. like anybody, not anybody, but a lot of people <laughs> can make really good mm -hmm. cinematics, but mm -hmm. you know, making really good gameplay is a whole other thing. And right. the people in the chat were commenting on the gunplay in that first video. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I would have loved to seen some like real gameplay f for such a, you know, big franchise as Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. Agree. Colossal, I'm going to bounce back to you since you gave me the shortest answer. I, I, I'll give you something that I know you can comment on. This game is being developed by two very popular names. One with a good reputation, one with a not so good reputation. Bioware and Electronic Arts. <laughs> so, for a franchise, and and Fast Card, please tell me because I don't remember. Did did Electronic Arts have to do anything to do with when they did Andromeda? Or was yeah, it they Bioware? had everything to do with Andromeda. <laughs> they did. Okay, okay. So, so yeah. my question is, you know, and we've had this situation with Electronic Arts before, Colossal, with them pushing stuff out stuff not being ready is that a concern for this will they have learned a lesson from andromeda because andromeda later on was fixed up and they did some things to make it better but there was a feeling that it was pushed out too soon um do you think that's a concern for this game i mean i mean if you're i mean yeah it could be a concern a lot of people have uh trust issues with bioware especially ea you see ea dealing with the fifa stuff too as well so I mean, a lot of people have, you know, buyer's remorse or in terms of buyer's beware dealing with these two companies. Buyer did deal with very good um, storylines, but mm -hmm. as far as promising uh, certain things, they've managed to, you know, put cuts on their rear ends on that one. So, I mean, but this franchise, as far as Mass Effect has, you know, they've had some pretty good reviews and lately they've had some not so good reviews. So mm -hmm. we'll see how they work out. Hopefully they've learned their lesson. If they don't do well, then apparently they did. I mean, it would be a sad, it would be a shame because <clears throat> Mass Effect's franchise is a well-known franchise. It's been around a long time. People have long really rocks. enjoyed it. And I would hate to see, I would hope that they turn the dial from what happened in Andromeda. Take Andromeda as, you know, an anomaly and that this one be really good because if this one isn't good, I, I think it will damage the franchise. I think I think it will. It'll um, kill the franchise if this one doesn't work out. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's hope that let's hope that they do get it together because I would love to see oh, that. One final note mm -hmm. I, 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 I want to say that I, there's some, uh, you online currently had the Doctor Who crossover. Don't mm -hmm. ask me how. I don't know anything about it. I just mm -hmm. know. I just. I just know what to say. 
if 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 Thoughts of the Two were Squadron Forty Two would ever have a, a crossover, I would hope it would be something with Mass Effect. N maybe not the characters so much, but just bringing in the Normandy in, in, into the, the universe somehow. Because right now, in my opinion, I think the Star Runner is probably the closest to the Normandy that, that we have. Maybe similar, kind of the similar kind of design, reminiscent of it. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, again, they've been influenced right by mm -hmm. franchises like Mass Effect and film franchises. So I'm. I'm sure there's a lot of ode to a lot of ships that we've seen, you know, in, in different uh, mediums. Okay, that's that's. I want to cross over with the Expanse, just saying. <laughs> uh, and we know, and we know he played Star you know, Citizen. So. Oh yeah, you know this is going to be something for sure. There's no question about that. I, I think that we'll definitely see some things reflected there. Um, yeah, my, my thing again with, with Mass Effect is I hope it does well. Um, I just hope that EA, like, Disney keeps their fingers out of certain things, you know, and lets the people who do the games do the games and do them well. EA just can't help it. They just cannot yeah, help yeah. it. I agree. They just keep I agree. doing this type of stupid stuff. So, I mean, if EA's involved, look for some stupid NFT stuff coming out. I mean, they just can't help it. Well, let's hope, let's hope that they don't. Profit let's first. They don't. Let's hope, yeah, I know they're about the money. I know. And that about games. Mm -hmm. I know. And that's a shame because EA's title, when it first came out, was... <laughs> For gamers by gamers. That's what their thing was. And that's what they were about. And those early games reflected it. And it definitely, when it got bought out and changed, uh, that went away. So, okay. Let's go on to our next subject. And I think this is Jade. Let's, uh, let's talk about this next one. Yes. Okay. So this next one, Star Atlas, immerse yourself in a metaverse of the future, the size of an entire galaxy. Experience realistic Unreal 5 graphics as you explore, conquer, and earn. Its destiny is in your hands. Welcome to the final frontier. Welcome to Star Atlas. Star Atlas is a virtual gaming metaverse emerging from the confluence of state-of-the-art blockchain, real-time graphics, multiplayer video games, and decentralized finance technologies. A grand strategy game of space exploration, territorial conquest, political domination, and more. Okay, let's take a look at Star Atlas. There's two, there's a trailer, and then a little teaser. Here we go. Legend has it that somewhere on the other side of space is a diamond the size of a planet. And everyone is out to find it. So I guess it all comes down to one thing. Who'll find it first?
Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. That's Star Atlas. Star Atlas. Uh, I'm actually trying to pull up their showroom page, and I don't know why I'm having problems finding it today. But let me start out with uh, Jade on this one. Jade, let's talk about Star Atlas. A lot of similarities. A lot of people have said there's a lot of comparisons to Star Citizen. Some people have even said maybe this is the next level of where Star Citizen would go. Um, I've had some time to watch some of the videos from the CEO and him talking about plans for what they want to do with this game. What do you know about Star Atlas? Any thoughts about what you saw on the screen today? Yeah, so my my knowledge of this game um, started way before like most gamers knew about it because I'm heavily into crypto, mm -hmm. have been since 2015. And so, you know, any anything that talked about a space game and crypto and NFTs, mm -hmm. I, I was kind of like, you know, what is this? That said, um, yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of parallels with Star Citizen mm -hmm. back when uh, the Kickstarter happened because it's gotten a crazy amount of investment already. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest difference is that Chris Roberts had a track record. And with this team, you know, I don't know much about them other than the fact that they're really good at raising money through crypto. <laughs> um, they were able to hire yeah. some developers from start uh, from CIG. Mm -hmm. um, but at the, at the same time, you know, this is speculative and it's very ambitious. A whole galaxy. I mean, we're trying to get 100 systems. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're talking about a whole galaxy at this level of detail. And uh, granted, they're using Unreal Engine 5, but, you know, this is another wait and see for me. Mm -hmm. I've, I've tried to buy the currency, the um, the token that's associated with it, mm -hmm. Polis, but there's only one exchange in all of the United States yeah. that you can buy it. And in my state, I'm prevented from it by law. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hmm, you know, I'm... I'm taking a wait and see approach on this. This yeah. to me looks like an investment platform with a game attached to it mm -hmm. rather than a game that happens to use NFTs. Mm, that's an interesting observation. I like that. Uh. That I, I was thinking that, but you put it into words. <laughs> you put it into words. Okay. Thank you. Um, Colossal, let me bounce this to you. No, let me go to FastCard first because uh, I know how much FastCard loves investing in ships. Um, <laughs> fast card from what you saw, what, 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 it was something that attracted you and something that was like, nah, I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on it? My thought is if they could make a game in Unreal 5, why mm -hmm. can't she I do? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, the graphic does look good. I, I, I give it that. But what about the gameplay? Uh, there's, 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 there's not much. The trailer that we that we showed I uh, saw tonight it didn't have much gameplay. Mm -hmm. And some people are comparing that that we have right, right, right on, on the screen now to, to the Redeemer. I can see it a little bit. It's kind of like a, a Band of Defender Redeemer cross. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 those two had a had a baby, and 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 um, and they, they, that was the product. Yeah. But um, the the the, the, the space bike that you saw in previous trailer kind of had a not feel to me. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But like I said, for me, I I, I would want to know more about the gameplay, uh, independent of, of all the other kind of things going on. Okay. Okay. I know, Colossal, I'll come to you. I know you had talked about this game in particular was the one that really you thought was a way for people to enter into uh, things like crypto, having an understanding of it with economics and all that other stuff. Uh, again, again, there's these parallels to Star Citizen, you know, whether or not, um, and people have even questioned, you know, and we can talk about this a little bit later about whether Star Citizen would ever go to a model like this. But I, I am curious to see what you think about Star Atlas from what you saw a lot of good stuff there we, you and i went to the website the website was amazing in the design but that's the shiny thing you know and, and and they present it very well and jade mentions there are credible people working at the company there are people who've worked at the at cig plus other industry people the person who's the ceo is, is into finance uh and and has been in that for a while so any thoughts about this one but there were credible people who was working on everquest next and we see what happened with that <laughs> i mean so i i mean this game has my interest, not in the fact that I want to play it. Mm. I don't know if it's actual a game. I, you mm. and I had this conversation. I love the way how they're using the idea of DeFi. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't know what DeFi is, it's another way for decentralized finance. Mm -hmm. 
And I love the way how, they, how they're using that in a game, mm -hmm. right? They're introducing that and saying it's going to be in a game, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen any gameplay. We've looked at the marketplace. Mm -hmm. I mean, Drift, there are ships that are as big as 140 meters wide and 192 <laughs> meters high yeah. and 510 meters in length. <laughs> I know. And they have big, huge amphitheaters and mm -hmm. theaters in the ship. Mm -hmm. Now, you tell me if CIG can do that or, I mean, we haven't seen that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to compare the two. Right. I'm just saying, are you really going to play that in this game? Mm. Probably not. And if it is, I'll be definitely surprised. I might buy a small ship at $40. Mm -hmm. But these ships mm -hmm. are expensive. 25k well i mean let me let me ask you a question i mean there is jade raised up remember i said she verbalized what i was thinking there right. are some people who are saying we because there's not there's not a lot here that we know right there's not a lot here that we know um right. there are people this is the game i was referring to earlier there are people who are already doing a web-based game through this game right now where they're buying their ship they're stocking their ship they're loading it up with food ammo and supplies they're able to send it out into the virtual verse. Now, mind you, you're not seeing anything. I'm just saying this is what you're able to do through the browser. And they are able to make profits just from that. Right. There's no gameplay. There's no getting in a ship. There's no getting behind a steering wheel. None of that stuff is there. But, well, that is good. but no, no, no. Go All I'm saying is that I'm, I'm talking about a comparison to Star Citizen. I'm saying yeah, there's no game playing. They literally just load their ship up with supplies they need. They send it off into the verse, in, into their verse. And then it goes out and does missions and makes money. Right, and, so, and so the question is, will they expand on that and give it a little bit more depth where they're able to, where these ships, these avatars, these NFTs are representations of what the, what the game is doing, that there yes. isn't a need for an actual physicalized ship in the game. Now, mind you, we watched that trailer right. and when it came out a couple of weeks ago, people went crazy because they saw it and then a lot of people said, well, it's just a cinematic. It doesn't say that it's in, you know, in game engine playing is they, we know that they're using unreal engine, but yeah, I, it's a Jade's point. Is it, is it going to just kind of remain limited or will they deliver? Cause you know, just cause you'd put the specs out on a ship and say it's 500, it doesn't mean you're going to play it. And you and I saw some ships, the one ship we saw in here, which is called the, um, something tree. I can't think of the name of it right now. I can't find it. But the, tree the, arrow, the tree arrow, the tree arrow, the tree arrow, okay. the tree arrow is ninety nine thousand dollars, <laughs> real money. That all? That's all. <laughs> it's a tra it's a trade your interest, you trade your interest in fast card. You can get it. You right. know, <laughs> the, the, the one I told you about, the Ogrika John Esther, um, Asterisk, right. that's twenty five thousand. Yeah. So, I mean, um, but I, I guess to get to your point. I do, to, on the flip side, as far as arguably, I could argue that there is gameplay. Okay. And there are games that are out there where all you do is manage. Right, right. That's all game. you do. Mm -hmm. Right, and, right. And we got football manager out there. You got baseball manager games out there. Right. You got football manager 2022. And okay. you manage the game and you bring in players and you buy players and you go ahead and, and trade players. Mm -hmm. And you will see a little bit of a gameplay. You let it, uh, you, you can play, you know, Liverpool, go, go Reds, go Liverpool right. against Chelsea, boo, against Chelsea and things like that. And you can actually watch a game being played. Okay. You're not controlling it, but because of the people that you invested in, you're watching the involvement of your investment. Right. So if you're sitting there in this game, in which this game does have right now, mm -hmm. where you can actually purchase a ship, mm -hmm. buy certain resources, and mm -hmm. actually commit it to doing some type of runs and things like that, mm -hmm. it is it is a gameplay out there, but it's called management. You're managing right. a ship. Do right. I actually see a type of gameplay like you see with Star Citizen mm -hmm. based off of what I see right now and what I think where it's going? Mm -hmm. I don't think you'll see that. I think you'll see cinematographies of a ship coming into a dock mm -hmm. or a ship coming oh. leaving out of a dock and, and warping to a different area. But then that's it. You're going back to the marketplace page or to go to, to see what your what your stuff is selling at and how it's selling at and how long it's selling and, and, and when you need to go ahead and bring in new investments okay. or spend new Atlas money and things like that. That's what I see. I see this as a management game. So let me go to Jay. Yeah, okay, Jay, wait, wait, wait. Jay, I got to ask this question before I forget it because I, I need your answer for this. So um, based on what you said a few minutes ago, Jade, Mm -hmm. Should gamers be wary versus investors? And what I mean by that is, is that when this when this web based game came out, tons of people went into it and started doing it, and and are doing well. They're making money doing it. 
because they're looking at it from that aspect. Are game, do, do gamers need to be the ones, and I'm, I'm talking about gamers in the sense of not because you want to invest, I'm saying because you want to play the game. Is it wiser for gamers to step back and wait because the CEO says it won't be until 2025 before right. we see well, something they, gameplay they said wise? five years. Right, right. That's exactly what I was going, going okay. to say was okay. that, you know, just recently, um, you know, they, they said it's going to take about, uh, it's going to take some time and it's mm. going to take another $500 million. Mm -hmm. Sounds sound kind of familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> right. I wonder where um, we heard that from. So huh? <laughs> as a gamer, if, if you got into Star Citizen in 2012 mm -hmm. and you love that feeling of waiting for the game to be made, <laughs> and, and you, you, you don't have any problem throwing your crypt your hard earned mm -hmm. hard mind crypto at a project mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm not a financial advisor mm -hmm. i'm not going to tell you what to do with your money mm -hmm. but i will say this i'm personally not interested until i can walk around my ship like star citizen go in sit in the cockpit or the on the bridge mm -hmm. right if it's that kind of game i'm interested if it's something like eve and, I, and someone in chat um you know mentioned eve and i said yeah to me this seems like Eve mixed with maybe a little bit of Elite Dangerous with that full, you know, galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, and then, Galnet, you know, yeah. you're throwing in um, NFTs and a economy like Second Life, mm -hmm. but maybe without users being able to create everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a super, if, if Star Citizen is ambitious, this is super ambitious. Mm -hmm. And with great ambition comes great risk in mm -hmm. terms of it being a letdown. So if, if you're somebody who's, you know, not worried about being let down, sure, if you're not, then wait. And I would say that, you know, there's not a differentiation between gamers mm -hmm. and crypto investors. A lot of crypto investors game mm -hmm. and a lot of gamers invested in crypto. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're just somebody who has no interest in playing the market, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a game in Star Citizen called the CCU game, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, people people talk about that mm -hmm. and we accept that, that's fine. But, you know, something like this, oh, NFTs are involved, therefore it's bad because I don't understand it. That's usually mm -hmm. what it means. Yeah. Um, it, and no, it's not inherently bad. It's just inherently risky. Yeah. And, and, and well, the difference between well, mm -hmm. the CCU game, it, 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 at least we, we we can see what we're getting. Most of the time, it, it, it's for a, a, a ship that's already in game that we, we can actually use and play. The, the, um, as far as yeah. I know, from start, like, at least I haven't played it yet, so I don't, I don't really know. But we don't really have access to a, 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 a lot of stuff other than the management thing that Griffin um pointed out. Right. But I, I, yeah. I, 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 I had a joke, I, I forgot about it, so to continue on, but that, 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 that was one point I, w I wanted to make. Well, see, the biggest, probably the, the biggest best difference. night, probably the best night so far that you forgot your joke, Fast Cart. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that? No, 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 no. Uh, 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 said, The biggest difference between uh, this game and something like Star Citizen comes down to the fact that, yes, you do own your ship. Somebody may say, I own a javelin. In reality, they own the exactly. right to use that javelin granted by CIG. Exactly. If CIG decides they don't want you to have that javelin for whatever reason, mm -hmm. then you don't have that javelin. Mm -hmm. With this, if, when you buy that, whatever it was, crazy number mm -hmm. amount of money ship, you actually do own that ship. Right. Star Atlas can't say you don't own it because they don't control it. It exists on the blockchain right. as a decentralized entity that can be traded with somebody else. Exactly. And by so the, that, that's that's the biggest difference. It's, by, it's not in a central database that somebody controls. And, and to your point, Jade, for example, the mention, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like I'm throwing shade at them because listen, we had enough shade thrown in Star Citizen. You know, when mm -hmm. I mentioned about the ship that cost $99,500, that ship now averages at about 107000 It's increased yeah. in value already, right? But the, the, you don't have to go to that level. They start out at $20. There's 40 there, There's various ranges of ships in relation that you can get into this with. My my thing about this is, and, and again, I, I'm curious to see what they will deliver in the end because they've been able to deliver the financial side of this. And Jade said this earlier, she mentioned about the fact that the greater ambition brings greater risk. And so there are some people who can drop the money into here and they are in it for the long haul. You know, they, they know if you tell them it's gonna take five years, they have no problem with that. Uh, there are other people who <laughs> wanna be able to come, what were you gonna say, Fast Card? 
Can I say something that I just want to say? The decade, the technology for a lot, for a lot of this gameplay is at least a decade away. That's all. People, people. people no, 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 no. I don't know. I don't know about if this, if it's a decade away, because the the, the, the old joke that someone that a, a meme lord oh, made. Don't okay, say well, ninety days tops, please. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say. I mean, I, I mean, the, the reality of it is, is that, and, and I'm gonna mention is. In fact, let me go to this this visual real quick because these are some points here that um, I think we can talk about. Here are some of the things that happen with certain types of games. And this even happens with Star Citizen, right? The risk of buying overhype happens when the concept goes live for the first time, right? We see it happen with Star Citizen all the time. New ship comes out and just overhype, right? People go crazy when it comes out at the very beginning, even though we know that if that ship came out today, it will probably be on sale either at Invictus or IAE <laughs> later this year. We still feel this need that we have to get it right at the very beginning. I won't even talk about the, uh, the was it the Inferno and the, uh, you know, all the hype, right? Just everybody <laughs> zoomed out to get it, right? Okay, that's one of the concerns that you have, all right? A, a second concern that you have, development delays. We also know about this from Star Citizen, right? They could tell us five years. I think they said by 2025, they're gonna put out their first like pre-alpha thing for it. But we know that because of technologies and things, things can happen. And so maybe what we think when we hear 2025, as we told Chris, stop calling out numbers, right? Well, guess what happens uh -huh. if they go to 2026, 2027? Well, development delays can happen. So we have to be realistic about that. And then lastly, competition, that there are other games, just like Star Citizen was the dog in its day and Elite. Well, guess what? Now we're talking about Star Atlas and we're talking about other games. There are gonna be other games that are also gonna be in some way similar being developed at the same time. So there are some there are some real concerns about this. Now, the other thing I wanna go to, I gotta go back to my second point here because there was something here about development delays. I was gonna say about when it's just stuff gets delayed, we get held up. But it was about the value of the ships and I can't remember what it was now, doggone it, it flew out of my head. Um, but it was something in relation to Oh, someone asked the question of whether or not CIG could do this. There's a great video out uh, by Ray's guy. You guys check it out when you get time. Um, you know what, Admiral Kusanagi, I think I have it. Do me a favor, Admiral Kusanagi, type up Ray's guy, uh, go to his most recent videos, and there's one that he has in there that talks about should CIG go to uh, NFTs and, and post it. And he doesn't dismiss the idea of it, but he does talk about that maybe CIG has chosen deliberately not to, at least for now. And one of the things he said that was so obvious, and I don't know why I didn't see it, Jade, I'm blind as a bat. He said, imagine if we had done NFTs on these ships and then they decided, you know, go crypto, and then they decided to do a wipe <laughs> on the economy with people having mm. their money invested. Right. That uh -huh. people would go berserk. <laughs> you couldn't do that once you've established prices. You can't just go in and wipe them. So it right. may not be good now based upon right. the structure that they have, you know, because if they need to do things like that, it would be limited. And so to your point, Colossal, and I'll get you in two seconds, you mentioned about the football management games. I could easily see them because there are no promises about what visuals would be in this game. There really aren't. You go to their website. They talk about other races. We see the the trailer with video stuff and whatnot, but we've seen that for game football management games where they show football players running around and stuff, but really it's a static screen. So I really, really, as a gamer, say, keep your eye on it. As an investor, if you know what you're doing and you understand it, and like Jade said, if you've done your due diligence and homework, hey, have at it, Hoss. That's my thing on that. Go ahead, Colossal. What were you going to say? Yeah, in, in addition to what you're saying, uh, I mean, this is, I mean, this is the risky part that I would definitely caution for. I, I, I mean, I would not be surprised or I would not be shocked if I saw, if this game ever, this ambitious title ever was released, mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if some countries saw some fault or the risk in this to be too great, that they would start implementing some type of policies against this type of gameplay. Mm. So, I mean, we saw that with, with EA, with their, you know, <clears throat> with their, you know, trying to go ahead and, and get people to buy things and buy oh. you know, teams and things like that yeah. and so forth and so forth. I would not be surprised Watch if you saw that, dealing with that, because once again, they're going into 
a but you know what the a, fact that it's decentralized gaming, the game unless you start regulating so, it and it's decentralized with the money it's real mm-hmm. difficult to do that real difficult well, to it, do that. It, 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 it could be real difficult but countries can create laws just as quick as you know really quickly on that mm-hmm. one so i'm just saying that I, I would not be surprised if i saw some bit of regulation on these types of uh mm-hmm. i disagree it would have already happened second life's been a thing for 20 years where people have been with real money creating value in the second life you know metaverse mm-hmm. and taking value out of it um well, it if we're already in, happened and it was bit. huge Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it kind of already that, happened a little bit. I'm starting to interrupt you, Jade. It kind of already happened a little bit with FIFA. It didn't go as far as Second Life, but I mean, but you see countries, um, you know, pushing back against that type of a concept. Well, let me ask you a question though. So, what happened with FIFA? That was, then, the though, that was a more. That was a well, card I was going to say. Well, it has to do more with it when it's deterp- when it's interpreted as getting into gambling. I think that's where the fear comes in because the loot right. boxes were taking. They looked at that as being taking advantage of you know kids and all these other people. And then if you start getting into gambling, because that's one of the issues that's come about Star Citizen. They've talked about will there be gambling and stuff, whether or not there'll be countries that have issues about that type of thing. So mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I just don't see it necessarily. I hear what you're saying, Colossal. I don't necessarily see it happening just because of the direct and, until regulate if if regulations ever happen with crypto, maybe. But they, right now, most governments are so ignorant to what's going on with it except for the banking industries of course they're 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 mm-hmm. up with it like um, i said i just i just said I just it's a concern happened. i, said, I, I got you it's a, be, be surprised. surprised okay i hear you yeah. i hear you i hear you i hear you um okay that's star atlas yeah let's well, let's, let's uh <laughs> let's, let's uh move on that was a nice invigorating conversation about star atlas okay here's one that a lot of people are excited about which one have i got first i actually have the wrong one first. Which one do y'all want to do first? Y'all want to do Starfield first or Eclipse first? Which one do you think we have greater conversation about? Uh, Eclipse for me. Well, Starfield, Starfield. Let's do Starfield first. All right, we'll do Starfield first. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, who's got Starfield? Who's reading that? I don't remember. Not even you. No, I wasn't reading another one. I was only reading one. Oh. Might have been you. Russell? No, Colossal was going to do Colossal was going to do Starfield, and you were doing Eclipse. So, okay, so Colossal was on you. Colossal got to find it again. Starfield. Oh, we're doing Starfield. Okay, so I'm doing Starfield. All right. Uh, No, you know what? No, 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 no. Let's do Eclipse first because we got that suite to do at the end. So let's do Starfield. Let's do Eclipse first. Sorry, guys. (laughs) I'll I'll do Star Wars then. So Star Wars Eclipse is the newest adventure in the High Republic era. Now in early development by Quantum Dream, learn more at Star, StarWarsEclipse.com. Set during the high, era, high Republic era, Star Wars Eclipse is an intricately branching action game that can be experienced in many ways and put the destinies of multiple players, playable characters in your hand. Created in collaboration between Quantum Dream and Lucas, Lucasfilm game. Oh, by the way, Colossal, there's somebody in chat with the title Darth Details, and he says Eclipse, so I'm sure that'll be somebody that you'll want to talk to later on. <laughs> well, you know, he's just, he's a fabulous person, whoever he or she is. That's a wonderful name. All right, here we go with the Eclipse. <laughs>
Okay, Star Wars Eclipse. I'm going to start out with Colossal on this since he is the uh, big Star Wars aficionado that I know of. He's all into the Star Wars lore and everything. Any thoughts, any feelings about this one? Okay, so I still need to do some research about this one because what it says is set during the High Republic era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm interested to see this. Uh, I, it's, I guess the Trade Federation is back involved doing the shenanigans. So, um, remind people, what the, what, 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 remind people what the High Republic era is. My bad. Uh, I, I mean, I really don't know. I think it's, I got the books, but I haven't read them. Um, it mm. should be at the point where the Jedi are, I mean, at its highest point, I believe. It's a lot of good, I mean, so I really don't know about the High Republic. I have all the three, uh, all the books. I ordered them just last year, but I haven't uh, read them yet. I, 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 I think it's like a replacement for, for the old Republic era, but I, I, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe somebody in chat might know High Republic. Uh, but go ahead. Last Sorry. Fight. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Colossal. Let me ask you quick. You played Fallen. What was it called? Jedi. Was it called Fallen Order? Jedi Fallen Order. Right. You yeah. Played that played one, right? It's supposed to be a part two thing about coming out. Right. But this is the next game that we're seeing. That's a quote unquote Star Wars game. We know that they're doing an update to Old Republic that's coming out as well. Uh, but this is something fresh, something we haven't seen before. Um. A lot of visuals here, some things we recognize, some things we don't, some characters we do, some we don't. Um, what's your takeaway from this? Something to look at or is it just all pretty and shiny for a Star Wars I mean, fan? All Star Wars films are always, because of the lore itself, are always something to go ahead and, and, and at least sneeze about. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm encouraged to see the type of gameplay coming in from Star Wars. Okay. Uh, from what is it? who's who created this? Is it Quantic Dreams? Quantic I Dreams, yes. Quantic Quantum Fighter. Dreams. Thank you for the okay. follow. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks for the follow. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, they did Detroit. They did Detroit. Oh, so mm -hmm. if they did Detroit, then this is going to be definitely something worth looking at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm encouraged to see what's going on. Shape of Faith in the Outer Rim. Obviously, it's in the Outer Rim. Um, they got some nice little digital goodie packages and things like that. Uh, the cinematography looks fantastic. Uh, uh, from for what I see, so um, I'm gonna be interested. I definitely will buy it, and but I'm interested, and in, I want to know what is that race, especially that guy coming out of the, that water. It reminds me from Underworld. Uh -huh. um, reminds me of Marcus. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Lord, so okay, uh, it's interesting to see that. All right, Jade. Any thoughts about the trailer? No, and <laughs> this will probably be the game that I say the least about. Because, uh, as some of you probably already know, I'm not a big fan of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, it, don't look into the sun during an eclipse. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. Good advice. Fast card, how about you? Yeah, uh, I, be I believe it was um, Mesa who said all the Quantum Dream games are more interactive games than interactive movies than games so if you if you enter something like detroit and i believe beyond two souls with quantum dream mm -hmm. then this is this is your back especially if you if you want to see something like that with, with, with a star wars um twist on it i am interested in in, in this game i know we, we won't have the trailer there, there's no gameplay in it but it's star wars so i mean there's a whole lot a whole lot of people me included who, who, will, who will be into the game just could just because it, it has the name star wars in it so mm. Let me ask you a question. And, hope, we, and, 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 and hopefully this, and hopefully this one won't, won't have too much EA involvement. Go ahead. What would you say? Well, what my you question saying? is, if we didn't see the things that we recognize in here, the lightsaber fight, the Yoda, uh, the, the uh, I can't think of the race of the guy that was there who was from the, um, from the Trade Republic. If we didn't Trade see Republic, those recognize, yeah. if we didn't see those recognizable things, how would you feel about what you've seen? Well, they had me with the lightsaber, so... No, 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 I'm saying, I'm saying, saying if those oh, things okay. were not in the trailer, how they, would you oh, feel about still, what you're seeing? Cinematically, it's still phenomenal. I, I, was, I still would go ahead and probably look into it. If mm -hmm. I didn't have any inkling that this was Star Wars, or didn't even know about Star Wars and just saw this, mm -hmm. I'd have been like, Griff, have you seen this game? This game looks phenomenal. Okay. Um, and then just, just reading up on it, you know, it does have elements of Detroit all through it. Since with all new characters and environments, you have the power to make choices mm -hmm. with consequences thanks to many outcomes 
in this deeply branching narrative. So, I mean, like I said, if you if you haven't played Detroit, people, you need to go out and play Detroit because this will definitely give you a, a, at least a heads up of what to expect with this game here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, we're getting down to our very last uh, uh, item that we want to look at today. And this one is a very uh, familiar one, I think, to probably everybody because there's been a lot of buzz about it. Uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, take that one on and uh, and read it, uh, Colossal? Oh, all right. Starfield. Uh, let me pull up this thing. Okay, okay, great, great, great. Here we go. Starfield is the first new universe in 25 years from Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, and Fallout 4, and this next-generation role-playing game is set amongst the stars. Create any character you want and explore with unparalleled freedom as you embark on an epic journey to answer humanity's greatest mystery. Launching November 11th, 2022, exclusively on Xbox Series X and S and PC. Become a member of Constellation at Starfield uh, starfieldgame.com and be among the first to receive Starfield news and updates. Mm. Um, interesting game. I think a lot of people are definitely interested because of the studio that's making it, such as Bethesda. As in Fallout uh, 76, as in... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but Bethesda got bought out by who now? The, well, they, yeah, they got, but Microsoft bought them out. Right. So that should be the whole, that should be the whole crux in Bethesda's life right there. Because, you know, it's a little bit of Harry Potter reference. Okay. Because Bethesda, because of its mistakes, Bethesda was going out of the deep end. All right. Well, let's take a look, let's take a look at their trailer. Yeah. And, uh, and actually there's a, there's a two part thing here that we're going to see. So it's a little bit long, a little bit longer than the other ones, but we can come back and talk about it. So here we go. They say, the wonder is, not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. You're part of Constellation now, part of our family. What you've found, it's the key to unlocking everything. We reach your Constellation. This is all we've been working towards. Looks good. We've come to the beginning of humanity's final journey. Prepare for departure. Graviton loop array full check. Your space lane is clear. That's why we're here. Engines go. To discover what's out there. Good luck, Constellation. You are go for launch. Play it day one with Xbox Game Pass. I think the one thing people underestimate about video games is that people think it's just playtime. But I always say that the one thing video games can give you that nothing else in entertainment can is that feeling of pride, right? Look what I did. And even though we want to make a game that is very big and is very long, you can play for all of those years, it's all the paths you didn't take that make it special to you, that you feel like when you finish that quest, 
that you feel that you accomplished something that week. The people who love video games can always say like, you know, what'd you do today? I saved the world. We've been incredibly lucky to work with such a tight group of people for so long. Like we're all friends, it's like a second family in a way. We all sort of know or get what a Bethesda game is. There's definitely this core group who's been working together for decades and knows how to make a BGS game. And then there's this you know, new generation of game developers who are coming in and working at BGS who grew up on those games those people made. For some people, those are the games that got them to go into the industry in the first place. And what I love about that is those people come in and they love the worlds too. And they wanna to stay true to those worlds that they grew up on. And so we're still able to maintain what a BGS game is, but continue to evolve. I think we underestimate how long people are gonna play it. You look at Skyrim, we're sitting here 10 years later and it keeps having this life and it changes how you want to create something. Yeah, I feel like our games sort of have two lives, right? Like we create this game and we put everything we can possibly put into it and tell the stories we want to tell and build this world that's sort of a setup that when we hand it off to the players, they play it, but then they take it and make it their own. They tell their own stories and then they make their own stories with our tools. I think it's the hallmark of our games that, you know, you play it and my experience is going to be different than yours. I'm gonna come in and tell you a funny story about something that happened to me. You may never have seen that because it's just a confluence of events. And I think that helps with the longevity and it helps with that feeling of community in a lot of ways. It is a world that you get transported to that you can really make your own. And that's where, you know, for me, the magic is, you know, to do it for two decades and close to that for so much of our group, there's a big trust there that we know how we solve certain things together. We were doing Morrowind and looking at what we might do after that and beyond that. And we, we had a list of what are the other types of worlds we want to go to. And obviously Fallout was at the top of the list. You know, if we could, if we could do that and that, you know, magically, luckily came true for us. And right behind that was, you know, science fiction. Going to space, I think there's a magic in just defying gravity and taking off from a planet. Like that's, it's extremely difficult human endeavor. Yeah, a lot of our games are about exploration and that's sort of like, that's the ultimate exploration is what's, what's out there, what's past Earth, right? So it's incredibly exciting for us to work on something like that. I feel like every time we come to a game, we're starting fresh. We're saying, okay, we just did that one, that's over. How do we make it better in every way? It's got a more realistic, science-based backing to it, whereas Skyrim is sort of a, you know, an epic fantasy. This is a more grounded uh, game and a grounded setting about exploration. So I think that gives us a different take on how we make everything. So that's sort of the thing you latch onto when we're, we're making new areas, making environments, making characters. The mechanics of the world are entirely different, but there are similarities. And I think those, you know, those are things we like. Like we like playing first person. We like having all the coffee cups. We like being able to touch everything. Those moments make, make the whole thing believable. Being able to watch the sunset and nighttime come and just sit there and watch the world go by. Seems like it's not gameplay, but it is vital to how you feel through the rest of it. I also think that because it's based in a more realistic atmosphere is like, you, know, you have a lot of people on our team who are super into certain things like robotics or you know engineering, and, and they can use this lifetime of knowledge they have gathered and then use it in their work. Everyone comes from you know these different areas and brings stuff to the game that can make it in, and it all it all matters, you know, from the rocks to the the clutter to you know, what the spacesuits look like. It's, you know, based on people's experience and sort of learning about how things work in the world and trying to apply it in a way that's believable for this universe. Yeah, it starts feeling so real to us. Like all you're saying, we do all that stuff, but then concepting like everything they eat or 
the toys the children play with? Or what are their bedtime stories? What is their art? What is their history? What is their entertainment? It is a universe, not just a game. There has to be an emotional trigger that occurs. And I think as time has gone on, we're able to paint an even better picture that triggers that emotional thing. We always have that step out moment into the world, so to say. Technology has changed, we've all changed. So our expectations when loading up a game, like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out, and there's gonna be this moment, us being able to do that and have it feel new every generation, every game, is something that is really special about what we do. I like to say that Starfield has two step out moments. It's cryptic. Our process of making it is, is a journey for us that is very, very rewarding. And coming to Starfield, everybody's starting over and saying, what would you want to do? What does going to space mean to you? And everybody comes back to the same one. I want to see what's out there. Okay, so I thought it was an interesting coincidence that the name of the ship in this is Constellation, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> let me go to you, Fast Card, first on this one. Um, Starfield, Bethesda, I know you're a Bethesda follower. Um, any thoughts about this? It's been in making for a while. Um, you know, in fact, I think even though they say 25 years, it, it's really been, I think, it, I think the development started officially like 11, 11 years ago, something like that. Any thoughts about uh, this? Because this was supposed to be announced a year ago or come out a year ago, and then they pushed it back until uh -huh. November of this year. Any thoughts about it? I just want to say I want to thank Chagellion for, 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 for the raid first. Yes. So thank you, thank you Chagellion, Chagellion. And, and how they're all, all, all the viewers. Thank you. Uh, my my, my knee-jerk joke reaction is that we saw more of that Todd guy than we saw of Chris Roberts in all of 2021. That's just a joke. That, that, that's actually true. But... Um, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm you say I, I'm I'm a big but that's a big. Vector fan. I'm not really that big. I, oh. I followed. Uh, I, I I played a few of, the, of, of their single player RPG, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't call myself a big. I'm more of a Bioware fan than I am. Oh, Bioware. That's but right. th that said, I am looking forward to this game. And, and Twitch chat was was going crazy for, for, during the trailer and having conversation. Yeah. A lot of people said that it's, it's a cinematic trailer. It's not showing gameplay. Again, I'm I'm, I'm I would love to see gameplay, but it's, I mean, if it's anything like. You know, past RPGs it should be fine. Okay, okay. Jay, From the what, I mean. okay. Jay, what about you? What you saw uh, with Starfield? Any thoughts? Yeah. Um. So I never played Skyrim, but I have a lot of friends who did, and they they love that game. Mm -hmm. And so when I heard that the studio was making a space game, you know, I I obviously really got tuned in. I'm not into fantasy games, mm -hmm. but this. I probably will play the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't wait for it to, to release. And, um, you know, Lady Space Patrol um, made a point that, you know, Star Citizen kind of, like, it kind of spoils this, you know? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think this game is, its selling point is exploration, mm -hmm. right? And it's a single player game. Mm -hmm. um, and so if, if you're okay with a single player um, exploration story-based game mm -hmm. and I really want to, I've heard that Bethesda puts a lot of detail in the games. I've never played mm -hmm. um, uh, Fallout, but I've seen it and mm -hmm. I've seen people play it. And I just, the prospect of a sci-fi space game made by them, I, I'm loving it. I'll probably, it's an insta-buy when it comes out for me. Okay, good, good. Well, the question. Sure. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, is it a question? Are, are you going to pre-order or, or, or buy it first day? No, I'm, you know, I pre-ordered No Man's Sky, and I felt kind of burnt from mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna wait till first day. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Colossal, I'm gonna throw a different question to you about this. Um, I I said this a while back. I don't know if you remember when I commented about it, but I found it really interesting, really interesting that of all the times of the year that they decided to drop this, 
it's November 11. Right. I thought that was really, really interesting, right? Um, not saying that Squadron 42 is coming out at that time, but I just thought it was interesting that it was like right between what would be Citizen Con and <laughs> IAE. Um, I you. So let me ask you a question. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier, Bethesda in some ways is similar to the situation we talked about with the um, Star Wars Eclipse game. They've got a lot riding on this because many of these AAA companies have been, that historically have always put out these great games, have also fallen into this thing recently where the games have not met the standard that I think gamers have looked for from them. And this is a big risk thing for Bethesda. They're taking on a whole new genre um, you know, still within their storytelling, you know, type of manner that they do stuff, but they are stepping into a whole new arena when it comes to this and space games have been popular, um, uh, and they have a certain credibility to themselves. What do you think about this? Do you think by them putting that date out and they put that date out in 2021, they said, you know, 11, 11, 22, it's coming out. You think there's any risk factors involved in that with them? You think they'll meet that date? Cause we haven't seen anything. Someone in chat, I think Remar, somebody said, we haven't seen a piece of gameplay and it's supposed to be coming out this year. Right. So <clears throat> those are all good points. And I did write a little note that basically said, did anyone take a screenshot of that date that was on that cinematic uh, that you saw that says 11, 11, mm -hmm. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, okay. So there are games like Dishonored and Wolfenstein that didn't achieve high expectations. I know, uh, but I know Arcane Studios made one of them and things like that, but Bethesda published them. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's always going to be risk in games. Uh, I, I, you know, I could make a joke and say there are no coincidences when, when it comes to that date, you know, and things like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, this could be a coincidence. They could be putting out for the, for the holidays. There is no gameplay. We haven't seen, or at least we haven't seen any gameplay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I always wait for E3. That's like what the first week, first mm -hmm. second week of June. Mm -hmm. I always wait for E3 to check and see if there's gonna be any types of big things going on and blah blah blah. Or Gamescom, gameplay, right? Or Gamescom. So haven't seen any gameplay yet. I am. I, I would say that I would. I doubt if that date of eleven eleven twenty two comes out unless they have a beta that they allow mm -hmm. people to go ahead and play or some type of early access. If I, I haven't seen anything like that on their on their on their web page, you you see games like right now um, like Mortal Online Two or mm -hmm. things like that that have already opened their things, including Star Citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, not not in beta, but pretty much are allowing people to play their type of game in gameplay right now. Haven't seen that yet, so um, I am encouraged by what Jay, Jay said earlier because I do love Skyrim mm -hmm. as well. I I think ESO needs to go ahead and catch up to that, mm -hmm. but ESO is, is ten times better now than what it was when it first came out several years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as Bethesda and their storyline and 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 type of experience that they have dealing with Skyrim mm -hmm. going into this one, I'm encouraged. But until I see some bit of gameplay, um, I don't know if they're going to hold on to that date. Uh -uh. Do you think it's risky that they've put that date out? I mean, they, they put that date out. I mean, they didn't say last quarter. They said a specific date. You don't think that that means that they, that they're prepared to do it. I mean, if they push I mean, back, if they push back again, I mean, people yeah. grumbled a little bit when they pushed back this time. I mean, we saw that happen with a uh, new world when people, you know, they pushed back, people kind of grumbled a little bit, right? You don't think they'll make well, their date? Because we yeah, haven't seen anything. I don't anything. think so. And they'll be compared to Cyberpunk. So I, 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 I don't think that they'll meet that date. Although I'm highly optimistic that they will. Okay. So we'll see what happens with that. I wish Bethesda all the best. I wish all gaming companies the best of luck. Because mm -hmm. these are the things that we love to play. These are the things that we want to do. I don't wish any ill will of any company whatsoever. These people work really, 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 really hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I hope they they meet their goals. I really do. Okay. 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 Yeah, I I think. Um... And I'm gonna—I I won't even express my thoughts on this because I want to move forward. But I will ask everybody on the panel from the games we've covered tonight, which one? And I'll start with you, Fast Cart. Which one do you feel is the most promising for 2022? And, and I don't mean in the sense of it being released, because like Star Atlas, we know it's going to take time for that. So let's, let's include it in the list. What which game do you see as most promising for gamers, for people interested in space games? Out of all the ones we covered tonight, I'm I'm, I'm caught between Mass Effect Five and Starfield. Okay. All right. Jade, how about you? I'm going to 
I'm gonna pick a shocker. The mm -hmm. Star Wars Eclipse game. Mm. Just mm. because of how big uh, Star Wars is, mm. and I, I think a, a lot of people want a really well done Star Wars game. It looked like it might be well done. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Colossal, how about you? Uh, I mean, I'll just go ahead and, and join the bandwagon of Mass Effect. I mean, there's a lot of people that that game is very, very popular. Okay, Mass Effect. Okay. Right. And this would be a good question for Twitch. For Twitch, what, 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 uh, Twitch can, can answer the same question. What game do you think of the most promising? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, it would be nice if we had a poll up there. To be uh, fantastic. Well, we could do a poll. <laughs> maybe we. Maybe maybe I could make that happen. You know, maybe just maybe I could make that happen. Let's see. All right, I tell you what, before you guys answer, I will go ahead and uh, game is most promising. Hopefully uh -huh. I didn't put any typos in there. Um, Colossal's making me work, guys, and I wasn't planning right. on doing this work, but I'll do that. All right, so the, so the first game was what? Boundary, and yep. then the next one was what? Uh, Earth 2? Two. Earth 2. Earth 2. And then Mass and Effect. Mass Effect 5. All right, and Star, Star Atlas. Star Atlas. Uh huh. They only let Star me Wars put Eclipse. five up here. This is a trip. And what was the Star Wars Eclipse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that right. Starfield, and then then my might, might well, put it. Well, down you know there. what? This sucks because I couldn't. They only they only let me do five on here, which is really kind of interesting. But let take me take out boundary. Take out boundary. Okay, I'll take yeah. out boundary. I don't know I'll if that's gonna happen this year. I'll saying. put Starfield in. All right, so we'll do that. Okay. And let's see, you don't have to put any bits in the vote. You don't have to do that. And this is going to last for one minute, gang. All right, so there's the poll going out. <laughs> and I'm voting. Can I vote? Yeah, you can vote. You guys can vote. Absolutely. You guys give us your vote on which game you think is the most promising mm. for 2022. I got to pick one? Yeah, you only get to pick uh, one. You only uh, get to pick one. Okay. okay, I'll pick this one. All right. Uh, and while they're picking, what, I'm going to ask you guys, what's your honorable mention? Any space game that we didn't cover tonight, do you have an honorable mention? So, Fast Cart, let me start with you. Honorable mention for 2022 space game that people should take a look at. Quarter 4, 2022, Homeworld 3. That's supposed to be coming out this year in quarter, in quarter 4. So, I, I, I still remember put, putting together my new PC. It was a Pentium something back in... 2000 something, mm -hmm. early 2000, and playing Homeworld and being amazed. The soundtrack, mm -hmm. the visuals, it was something brand new. It was the first 3D um, RTI. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to Homeworld 3. Okay, awesome. All right. And uh, let's see, Jade, anything you'd recommend? Honorable mention. Yeah, the big dark horse for 2022. Mm -hmm. Quadrant 42. Answer the call, 2952. Ooh. Right? It's coming out, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no? Okay. And Kerbal Space Program, too. Okay. Kerbal Space Program. Okay. Kerbal Space Program. Okay. Kerbal Space That's Program. definitely a good one, Jade. Okay. All right. Definitely a good one. Well, well, you need to pull up that um, that, that, that um, uh, past uh, uh, Soul Citizens of us talking about what, when Squadron 42 was going to come out. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll have to go back and look at it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Colossal, what's, uh, what's going to be your honorable mention for 2022? So my honorable mention is people have forgotten this. Scorn. Oh, Scorn. Yeah. Scorn. Yeah. The horror sci-fi that's supposed to be coming yeah. out yeah. Uh, for Xbox Series X and PC. It got delayed. It got pushed back to this year. Uh -huh. um, so, but it's a horror sci-fi. It looked really, really good uh, during the summer when they, when they first um, uh, premiered it. So... I'm, I'm definitely interested in that. I think a lot of people forgot about that uh, that horror sci-fi. It was the one where they got a nice little statues and they had a little, uh, like like it looked like blood, but it was like I tree remember. roots coming from the from the face, and mm -hmm. then they had a, two statues that looked like alien, but they were uh, humanoid figures. They were on top of each other and things like that. You got to look at that. All right, all right. Well, here's your poll, folks. Boom, there she is. All right, all right. Starfield, forty-two <laughs> percent takes the vote. Star Wars Eclipse mm -hmm. is in second place, Mass Effect third, and Earth 2 and Star Atlas 
Everybody's nervous about those two right now. Still a little bit too new. I'm for surprised folks. Eclipse got got second place with you know ten people. I would have I would have thought Mass Effect would have been top two. Oh, Star Wars. Oh, I don't know. Jade, Jade Jade quoted it there. There you go. I guess everybody liked what Jade <laughs> had to say. I didn't want to pay attention to us guys. I guess what the heck. All right. Okay. All right. Nah, Star Wars. <laughs> it's a Star Wars thing, right? You can't you can't lose with Star Wars. I guess right. Okay. Unless you a Grogu fan. Don't even start. Don't even start. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, let's move on here. We, uh, as you guys know, in the month of December, we did a giveaway uh, tied to our YouTube page that we would get a thousand subscribers, and you guys helped us out so much. We reached the thousand mark of subscribers on YouTube, and we said that if we hit that mark by December thirty first, that we would be doing a giveaway for a RSI Phoenix, uh, which is going to be. Uh, it's, given away to, to the lucky winner. And we're going to do that tonight. So uh, without further ado, for those of you who are here, uh, we are going, as you know, you had to comment on the particular video that was the giveaway video. Many of you guys, we had over 200 people that came in and boom, signed up for it, which was awesome. So we're going to go ahead and do it. Um, Jade, why don't you give us the uh, the countdown here? I've got it all set up on screen. This isn't going to pop up in Discord because I have to use the, you know, the picker that's a browser thing. Um, right. But uh, yeah, if you give us a countdown and I'll punch it and I'll let you guys know who the winner is. So I just count down? Yeah, just give me a five, four, three, two, one, and we'll hit it. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. <laughs> <laughs> you would throw the lift off in, right? All right. Of course. We had 208 names here. And let's see. Our raffle pick random winner. Better not be colossal. It's just, it's like doing its thing. The winner is Smile. I've never seen that name before, but Smile, you are the person who said, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a good luck to all. You are the winner, Smile. You are the congrats. official. Congrats. congrats. You are the official winner. Let me, let me put this up here because see, Fast Card will be talking about that he should have won later on. So I got to put it on the screen mm -hmm. so that we'll know he, that it was actually Smile. There we go. Smile is go. the winner, Smile. Okay, so Smile, uh, we're going to ask that you would contact us. If uh, I'm going to put a video out for this too, just in case you're not here. Uh, but you could contact us at soulcitizens at gmail.com and we will get that out to you ASAP. And make sure that you send us your RSI, of course, name and the email that you use for that account. And we will get you all hooked up. So congratulations. And uh, we appreciate, uh, once again, uh, you all who came out and supported us and pulled uh, the names and got, told people to sign because some people told other people, hey, go check these guys out. There were a lot of new names that popped in and people who complimented us and said they got to watch our videos. It was really, really great. So thank you all so much for helping us reach that 1,000 subscribers. And I just want to clarify, Griffin said RSI Phoenix, not LTI Phoenix. So just to, just to make sure. <laughs> yes, that Phoenix has 10 years of insurance on it. So that's close to LTI. It's, it's pretty close to yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome sauce. All righty. Well, I guess we're kind of reaching that time where we start to wrap it all up. I think we had a lot to cover tonight. You guys keep up with these games. Uh, we will have the links in the YouTube videos. So if you guys want to check out any of the games that we talked about tonight, uh, we will be, you'll be able to check them out. That's basically what I can tell you about them. There's a lot of promise in them. Uh, some of them are speculative. So keep your eye out, do your homework. That was some of the best advice that was given tonight. Do your homework for any of the games, particularly those that are investing real money. Just like Star Citizen. Do your real homework for that. All right. All right. This week coming up, Fast Car, why don't you tell folks what we got coming up and uh, I'll cover the one for next Sunday. What was happening for this week for Thursday? But Thursday, we're hopefully, yeah, we're definitely going to have um, a sneak peek on Soul, Soul Talk, 10 p.m. Eastern, that's 3 a.m. UTC Friday. But uh, that, that's, that, that's every Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern. So come on, come on down and join us to talk. It's our com community show. People can come in and talk with us about Star Citizen. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely doing a sneak peek, and we'll probably cover some Jump Town talk, um, talk too. So mm, Jump that. Talk, Nine Tails. We can talk all the good stuff. That'll be great. Awesome. Yeah, and upcoming this next uh, Saturday, mm -hmm. and you'll probably see something about it in this week in Star Citizen tomorrow, the Daymar Rally, mm -hmm. which is now an official CIG embraced event in the lore. It's now in the uh, Galactopedia. So, so thank, thank you for that, CIG. Mm -hmm. And we're all looking forward to you watching us race. Jay, we got some times for it. 
What's that? Your times for it? Oh, the Day More Rally? Wow, it starts it starts fairly early on the West Coast, so I'm going to, I don't want to give a, a specific time because, you okay. know, I don't want somebody to tune in the wrong time and get mad at me, but <laughs> go to daymorerally.com for all information regarding the Day More Rally and Atmo Esports as well on Twitch. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. And next Sunday, we are coming back with a show called Backers, Boasters, and Balkers. <laughs> Those of you who uh, can find out which category you fall in. I think everybody's probably a backer, but you can talk about if you're a boaster or a balker. Maybe you're just a backer. I don't know. But we're going to be uh, talking about uh, people who feel very positively about Star Citizen, people who maybe don't feel so positive about Star Citizen, and maybe people who feel neutral about Star Citizen. So, Colossal, are you a backer or a balker? Are you uh, just a, 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 a boaster? What are you? What, what category I don't, do you I'd never in? limit myself, sir. I'm all of the above. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> all of the never above. All of the above. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I'll buy that for a dollar. But it's always constructive. I it's, say that, Mike. Okay. I'll take that. That's the way it should Thank be, you, too. That's the way it should be. Well, listen, I want to thank our guests tonight, or our hosts tonight, I should say. Fast Car, Jade, Colossal, for being here thank you all for coming back this week and hanging out with us after our two-week break and we will look forward to seeing you guys on either thursday night or next sunday and hey, uh, yeah 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 we got we got to say happy belated birthday to one of our own oh that's right we had a birthday oh, that's just right. go by that's right Hi, guys. happy birthday to jade happy birthday jade Woo happy birthday jade Woohoo! I think Jade's the baby in our group too, isn't she? She is. All these old men, yeah. she's around all these old guys and stuff. I think she's the baby in the group. That's awesome with wait, Jade. Two more times around the sun, I'll catch up with you. Oh, oh wait, that's not how it works. Girl, yeah, you got a long way to go, sweetie. <laughs> she's getting closer. She's getting to go. closer. See, she's getting closer though. That is true. All right, well, listen, we're going to set up our raid for one of our good friends, and that is going to be Uber Nerd. So when you guys see Uber Nerd, y'all know Uber Nerd is the man. He's crazy. He sings and he plays Star Citizen. Give them some love. Give them a shout if you're not following them, following them. And um, hopefully we'll see you guys, uh, yeah, next week. And until then. I, I just want to say, I, I just, to, to, to someone who wanted me to say this, welcome to Earth 2. Oh, my God. As always, gang, peace, love, and soul. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. <laughs>